today I'm going down to a building that I'm making a film at. It's a corporate film, it's a fairly dull job. I've been making a short video about how the interior graphics came to be in the building, what it was derived from, etc. I went down already, I've done a day of filming down there, but there was some stuff that wasn't installed and it's now installed, unfortunately the building's occupied. So I'm going down there to try and film while people are working around me. So I'm just gonna have handheld camera. I can't set up loads of equipment, loads of sliders, anything like that. There's only about four more shots I need to get. There'll be some stationary and some moving shots, but what I'm gonna to have to do is try and get smooth motion handheld. And I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you how I'm gonna do that. So for this job, I'm taking one tripod, taking my Think Tank Streetwalker hard drive backpack. That's a very good one. It's big. In here I have two 5D Mark Threes. I have the 24 to 70 F2.8 and I have the 1635 f2.8. I also have the Tamron 70 to 300 f4 to 5.6. I have an umbrella, I have some memory cards, blower, a couple of flashes in case I want to take some photos. Sometimes I take still shots and use them in video. I've got a viewer for the screen so I can cut out the light and look at what I'm doing. And I've also got a little light which is a really good video light. It's quite cheap, it's very bright. Very, very bright. It's useful sometimes for illuminating things when natural light is compromised. But that's basically it. I have to go on a long train journey now, which isn't gonna be fun, but let's go. glamour of the car park at the moment. I have to shoot these signs up here. Flush the toilet please Hal. I'm sorry Dave, I'm afraid I can't do that. Well that was reasonably successful so let's go back now and look at the footage. So there's a couple of tips and techniques I can give you for actually holding the camera when you're doing handheld motion. First one involves a tripod. You take one of the legs up, and then what you do is use the two other legs to pivot the camera forward and backwards or side to side. You get a slight up and down motion with this, but it's nice and smooth. If you're just hand holding straight, what you want to do is have as many points of your body on the camera as you can. So elbows to my sides, chin on the camera, move with my legs. Now those are all well and good and they help a bit, but to get a shot like this shot here, you need to do a few more things in camera and in post, as well as the way you hold it. I'll show you. So you want to set your camera to shoot in as high a frame rate as you can. So I'm going to go to NTSC mode, which will give me faster frames per second. So now I've gone to NTSC mode, this enables me on this camera to go to 60 frames a second. So what I'll need to do now is change my shutter speed to 125th. Because you want your shutter speed to be roughly half of what your frame rate is. So this clip here, if I play it as it was filmed, looks like this. But it was shot at 60 frames a second and I'm working in 25 frames a second. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna right click on it, go modify, interpret footage. And I'm gonna change this frame rate from 59.9401 to 25. Now I'm gonna make a new sequence from that clip. So already we can see it's a lot slower and smoother but it's gonna go slower still. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna right click it, click speed duration, I'm gonna change the speed to 50%, that's half the speed, and then the time interpolation here, I'm gonna to change to optical flow. And I'm gonna render that. Whenever you slow down video, you're effectively creating new frames. And what optical flow does, is it analyzes the frames either side of these new frames, 
and creates the new frame as a morphed version in between these two images. And the effect of that gives you a smoother motion. It's slightly temperamental, but the less movement you've got between the frames, the more accurate it is. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a warp stabilizer filter. But you can't do this when you've affected the speed of the footage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click it and nest that sequence, call it nested sequence one. What nesting the sequence does is it creates a new sequence dropped into this sequence. So then I can apply the filter to this sequence and not the clip. So I'm gonna to go to my effects panel here and I'm gonna type in warp and there's your warp stabilizer. I'm gonna drag that on. Now that's gonna analyze. Now this fish looks a little bit green, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. I'm gonna drag that over the top. I'm gonna to go to my Lumetri color tab. I'm gonna change the white balance slightly. Just going to do a little bit of adjustment here. Just to match the rest of the frame. And there we go. Now we have a nice smooth motion on that clip that looks like we've used a slider or a tracking dolly. So hopefully that's given you a number of techniques you can deploy. If you're doing handheld work, you need to have smooth motion. You don't have to use them all like I did. You can use one or two, but hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea. I'll see you next time. Yeah.